reporters sat stiff at his desk. His mind was full of questions. Beads of perspiration trickled on his face, but he could care no less. He knew that the throne he was sitting on was full of thorns. But this was unprecedented. The news that was put in front of him made him shiver. It made him think that this is the worst predicament of my life. For in this situation, the entire future of humanity rests on my shoulders. So he thought. John F. Kennedy, JFK, the President of the United States, also known as the POTUS, knew that he was in a situation where he held the power to either shape the future or at least save the future or completely destroy the future. My dear Toastmaster of the day, my fellow Toastmasters and future Toastmasters, the day was October 16, 1962. The Cold War was in progress since the World War II had ended in 1945. US and Russia were taking shots at each other. They were having furtive attempts at ensuring that each of them had world domination. Their approach, the battle was no different than that of a game of chess. They had strategic moves, they had tactical moves to ensure that each of them had world dominance. But the battleground were many. The battleground ranged from technology. It ranged from third world alliances and even went all the way to space with only one attempt to find opportunities where they could find one of manship over each other. In the year 1962, Russia found this amazing opportunity of one of manship in the form of Cuba. Just a few years before, the pro American government had been toppled in Cuba and the socialist Fidel Castro had taken over power as a Prime Minister. But what was the strategic importance of Cuba to Russia? Russia realized that Cuba was no more than 90 miles away from the coast of America, a distance which is even lesser than between Bombay and Pune. The belligerent Fidel Castro, no more than 38 years in age, had all his intentions in ensuring that his neighbor would be completely humiliated. On the other side, the Russian Premier, Nikita Khrushchev, 62 years old, war veteran, was completely under pressure always of ensuring that he would show that the US can always be dominated. This position of strength is something that Russia realized they needed to capitalize immediately. So Russia and Cuba made a pact between themselves that Russia will move into Cuba with its missiles and ensure that more than 40,000 troops and more than 40 missiles were landed in Cuba in a very furtive manner. The idea was very simple. Ensure that the missiles were ready for launch and ensuring that US would stand threatened. Now you may wonder at this moment, what is so special about this warlike situation? History has been full of situations where countries have gone against each other. Nations have battled, nations have conquered and dominated. You may wonder why is this really worth our time? My dear friends, when you talk about Cold War, there is only one word that characterizes it. Its nature was completely nuclear. No more than 20 years before the world had seen the amazing impact, the amazing deadly impact that nuclear weapons had had on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The bombs could completely destroy humanity. And the way the Russian missiles were positioned, the Russian nuclear missiles were positioned in Cuba, they could impact more than 100 million lives in America. As you can see by the map here, the Cuban position very close to the border of US and with this Russia got launch capabilities into almost each and every city of America, thereby threatening the very existence of the country itself. In 1962, on 14th October, America realized that Russia was fueling its missiles in Cuba. As the news reached the President, John F. Kennedy, he immediately put together a council called as the XCOM. The XCOM consisted of his top advisors and also the chief of staffs. Now imagine yourself in that position. You are the top leader of the topmost country in the world. And you have the responsibility of not only defending your shores, 
but also ensuring that humanity is safe. And at this moment, John F. Kennedy was consistently and constantly barraged by his Joint Chief of Staffs in ensuring that they immediately attack. The first line of thought was, let's ensure that we have an invasion on Cuba. <coughs> and let's ensure that in this invasion, all the missiles are destroyed and thereby America is safe. But if you are the president of the most important country in the world, you need to think a little more. John F. Kennedy ensured that he had many people giving him inputs. He knew that war cannot be the first option. So on 22nd October 1962, the US government imposed a naval blockade upon Cuba. The naval blockade meant that no ships can enter Cuba without scrutiny. It ensured also that US thereby gave its full and final instruction to Russia to vacate Cuba. But as it were to be, Russia did not budge and tension levels rose significantly. US had no option but to ensure that it raises its offense levels to DEFCON 2, a term not known to many perhaps, but that was the only time in history when tensions rose to DEFCON 2 which meant that just one button it was away from launching nuclear missiles. But as tensions rise, mistakes happen. A US submarine in the Atlantic Ocean mistakenly attacked a Russian submarine which was laced with nuclear missiles. The captains on the Russian submarine were instructed, if you are attacked, fire the nuclear missile. The moment was extremely tense. The missile was to be fired. Just as the missile was to be fired, an unlikely savior appeared. Among the three captains on the ship, one, only one, did not conquer the attack. And without the concurrence, the attack did not go through. And with that, my dear friends, the Third World War, the nuclear world war, the third of the century, was averted. As this happened in the next three days, world leaders came upon US, including the Pope himself, requesting for peace. Intense deliberations and negotiations ensued, following which a compromise was conducted. US was to withdraw its threat on Cuba forever, was to withdraw its missiles which were stationed close to Russia, and in return, Russia was to ensure that it would vacate Cuba as soon as possible. My dear friends, what you have heard right now is what is termed as a Cuban Missile Crisis. Spanning 13 days, it shook the world completely. It's the only time in history Never before had it been, and never later would it ever have been until now, that the world came so close to a nuclear strike. And that would have meant literally the end of the world. My dear friends, this presents an amazing opportunity for a story which is narrated to you. But it also has brilliant lessons for all of us. For me personally, there are three lessons to keep in mind. The first one relates to my own profession, management. The way in which JFK conducted his meetings, the way in which he ensured decision making is unprecedented in the history of management. He ensured that everyone had an opportunity and ensured that even he was missing in some meetings so that normal decision making, appropriate decision making can happen. The second lesson, my dear friends, I realized is about the nature of war itself. In the modern world, the greatest enemy is not the opposition, but war itself. And my third lesson, my dear friends, is my personal favorite. This incident defined the word power for me. We understand power as something that we possess so that we can use it. But remember, when you have power and you are compelled to use it, you haven't used power. Power has used you. What I realized, my dear friends, is that the true expression of power is not in using it, but in not using it. My dear friends, history is strewn with examples of wars, defeats, victories of many nature. And we always believe that history is characterized by these moments. But in my humble opinion, the truly greatest stories are those. The truly greatest stories are those not in which great things happen or in which things have happened, but are those in which things did not happen. And in this case, war did not happen. Those